Good evening, folks, and that was freaking crazy. Um, as expected, it was the Roval weekend, and uh, yeah, <laughs> we just witnessed probably one of the best finishes in years. Oh goodness, um, yeah, it was a fantastic race weekend. Uh, Xfinity races practice. And qualifying were rough. They had uh, a lot of wrecks. Had, uh, of course, this is a very difficult track. Drivers learning it, finding the boundaries. They had they made a little adjustment to the, the chicane in the back because uh, drivers were hitting the tire barrier. Excuse me, that was a burp. There was uh, no room for error. But, uh, yeah, it was, a, excuse me again, I'm going to have to silence that, but, um, oh no, just a fan, fantastic race. The cup race was pretty clean for the most part at the start. Um, and then it got into, uh, a couple instances here and there, and then it just got into absolute craziness. Um. So, week, uh, Xfinity Series at uh, the Roval, we ran a uh, 66 full, full car, uh, Timmy Hill had uh, Life Cars, a big uh, group of dealerships from the Raleigh, North Carolina area, uh, promoting their LifeCars.com. Thank, thank you once again. Unfortunately, we had some issues, we had some radio issues, and we had some... Uh, Electrical Gremlins lost four laps. Unfortunately, had a much better car than our finish. First segment, we were freaking fast. We were holding off the 19 and 23 cars, and then just all kind of went downhill from there. Uh, Chad, he just kind of stayed out of trouble. Once again, completely out of his uh, element, and uh, overcame a cut tire. Finished 28th, the lab, and that's all he can really ask for. Um, he's hoping to go back and get him at. Uh, Dover, one of his more favorite tracks on the circuit. And then, of course, uh, we had Johnny J, who was originally supposed to drop 13. And then in practice, he, uh, first practice, uh, was kind of slow. Didn't really uh, realize he it was going to be tough for him to uh, get in the, the race. But, uh, and it was just a difficult track, no no room for error. So we went ahead, got Landon Castle, and uh, Landon went ahead and got the car in the show. And uh, had, Landon said he had a lot of fun. He uh, had, he said he had a blast in the the thirteen Dodge. That that is the famous zombie Dodge that Lon J drove, same colors and everything on it. So uh, Landon said he had a lot of fun. Of course, had to park it early, but he said it. it it was a lot of fun, and honestly, him running those laps, uh, just difficult track, just need all the practice you can, and it kind of, I think it kind of helped helped him for the cup race. Uh, we had some, uh, a lot of ringers, once again, in the Xfinity Series uh, go down. Uh, do the entry list real quick, because I don't want to. Uh, had a uh, Lawson Austin back driving the zero one for JD Motorsports. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go back about last week's podcast. I tried having a guest on. We had a fantastic, uh, fantastic recording session, and then I went to hit play at the end, and it didn't record his audio at all. Apparently, Audacity had a problem with, uh, or apparently it was the fact that me using Audacity. Just trying to uh, get uh, using that program to uh, record audio or stream an audio or record a conversation. And apparently it did not work. Um, he recently stopped his podcast too because he had the issues with get guests and stuff. Like we recorded two or three with him. I recorded two or three podcast with him that just went to shit and uh 
yeah, it w- unfortunately, it was more of the same on my end. And so, unfortunately, I had to call off last week's podcast. Really unfortunate because we had a fantastic record. So, I got some learning to do, figure out uh, what I can change and fix, and we can go on from there. And then, uh, other than that, the past week, uh, getting ready for the Roval, of course, some some late nights, some early mornings. Uh, drove the Tudor home in. Uh, nothing really of note. Uh, today, I went ahead and did a bunch of filming for the le- the next Wookiee Drives. So, be prepared t- for that one. It- it's of my path. It's of my Pathfinder, of course. Um. Uh, but uh, I did, got some good record sh- shots of it today. Uh, unfortunately, I had a, I drove down. There was a road uh, south of Statesville, kind of a real fantastic back road called Buffalo Shoals Road, and it crosses the Catawba River. So I figured that'd be a good place for to get a uh, good shot. Go POV drive driving across this old bridge. And I get it halfway across, and someone had hit a deer apparently a couple days before, and splattered everywhere. And apparently, it has not gotten cleaned up. So, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I had to cut the bridge. Or I'm gonna have to cut the bridge section from that footage. But uh, and then also did a little bit of uh, maintenance work on it. I got it cleaned up. I uh, vacuumed the carpet in. I fixed the rear shocks on the rear. The rear glass, um, got new uh, windshield wipers, but and I got the the little first aid kit in the mail that the factory first aid kit that came with those things. So expect a little bonus video from that too. But anyways, uh, got that done. Uh, let's go get back into the race. Uh, Lawson Austin back drew. Uh, News coming into this weekend for the Xfinity Series. Uh, Vinny Miller left JD Motorsports, went to BJ McLeod, signed like a two and a half year deal through 2020. So pretty big sign on his part. A lot of big things getting ready to come out of uh, BJ. Uh, finally moving out their tiny little shop. Uh, got a new trailer. So things are looking kind of up on for BJ McLeod. Uh, looking pretty big for him. Uh, let's see what else we had in uh, past week. Let me pull up Jay's key real quick just so I can. Because a lot of this stuff was happening as I was at work. I should have taken notes, but I did not. Oh, da da. And then, yeah, it was announced uh, worst kept secret in the Xfinity Garage. Nora Gregson signed the drive, the number one, or the drive, the number one car for Junior for next year in a multi year deal. Of course, moving on up, he's a contender for the Trucks Championship. But he's just moving on. There wasn't any room for over in the Toyota camp, but he uh, moving on up. Fantastic. Pretty good uh, seat for him to get get in. And then uh, Justin Allgaier announced that he was returning to to uh, Junior Motorsports. Everyone kind of expected that, but he's probably been the one to beat right now. So... Uh, a lot, a lot of silly season news for Cup. Uh, I'll bring this down. A lot of rumors where Daniel Suarez is uh, going. Apparently, uh, he was ta- in talks with Stuart Haas and Childress. But the Childress deal didn't go work out. Do-do-do. Kyle Larson finally got married to his uh, longtime girlfriend. do do Uh, the tw- the All Star Aero package with the Aero scoops was approved to run the majority of the races next year. So yay! Um, not really a fan of that. I think the Cup Series should be the fastest and the mo- most on the edge cars, and they just made things a lot easier to drive those cars. So I'm not really a fan of that. Right, and then um, big silly season news. Ryan, uh, two rookie of the year contenders announced for next year. Of course, AJ Allmendinger out at the forty-seven. Uh, I think I've been kind of thinking this was going to happen for a while. 
Uh, replacing him is uh, modified standout uh, New England driver Ryan Priest. Uh, probably his big, other than the part-time Gibbs entry he's had been driving in the last couple of years. This is the probably the next big step for him, and I think he'll probably do a little better than uh, Almendinger. Uh, Daughtry also announced that they're going moving to Hendrick support next year after the last few years of Childress support. So some big things, uh, and of course uh, Chris Buescher's got to continue doing his thing in that car. He's been quietly pretty solid over in that 37 car. So, yeah, some things to look forward to for next year. Uh, probably one of the best modified drivers in the country. Uh, he's got one full-time year at the national level. Uh, run, the year he ran for Johnny Davis in the 0-1 car, he kind of eh. But then he, of course, stepped back so he could put the effort his funding into doing uh, a couple Gibbs races and of course one at Iowa last year and then this year they bumped up his schedule. He's supposed to run a lot more but uh, other funded drivers came about. But uh, anyways, uh, one at Bristol has been a contender in every race he's ran this year in the 18 car. And of course they moving him on up. So Good move on that part. And also, yeah, and it was announced Ryan Newman, probably the week before, I think, Ryan Newman going drive in the six car full time for Roush Fenway. Where does that leave the 31? There was rumors Ty Dillon was going to go into that seat. Ty has signed an extension with Jermaine Racing, so that's not going to happen. Uh, rumors of Daniel Suarez was going to end up in it. But the other rumor was Daniel Hamrick moving up to that 31, and it's made, been made official. He's moving to the 31 next year. Uh, fantastic move. Uh, I don't think he's won in the Xfinity Series just on the basis he's driving for Childress, but I think him moving up, one of these instances that gives some fresh new blood into that seat, and then uh, Newman's, obviously he's in his 40s, he's uh, 15 years he's been full-time in Cup Series, so... He's still a pretty good driver. He just, probably his prime is behind him. So, I think Hemrick is a very talented driver. Uh, he was one of the top late model, or short track prospects a few years ago, and he's quietly ro risen himself through the ranks. So, just to see him rocket through the last couple of years, between his uh, Childress deal, moving to the 21 last year, and then getting the funding from Brendan Gaughan from the South Point Hotel and Casino. Just a fantastic, fantastic move. Uh, really looking forward to rooting for him next year. Let's see what else we got. Oh, and then uh, Sonoma announced they're running the full 12-turn uh, 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 circuit next year for the Cup Series, bringing back the carousel, which is just fantastic. I think uh, NASCAR was... Uh, had a lot of fantastic moments in the carousel. They kind of went away. They went away from it and went to the short shoot. Uh, I think it was because they were trying to cut down on uh, lap times and increase the number of laps. But then we also had a couple uh, big flips in 1999 between Ken Schrader and Steve Park. So, uh, but anyways, uh, bring back the, the carousel. Uh, just a fantastic section on that track. I've always, that's... Uh, running all my years run, playing Forza. It just, that that section of Sonoma has always been my favorite. Just It's just a fast, sweeping downhill left-hander, and then you got that wide exit. So you got a little room for error. It just, I think it just works out great for stock car racing. So, awesome to see that back. Uh, moving back to the Xfinity Series, uh, let's see what else we had for going back to oh, okay, Lawson. Austin back in the 0-1 car, car filling in that seat that Vinny Miller vacated. Uh, he's a uh, driver from the Grand Am Series. Apparently he made a start for JD Motorsports back in 2015 at Road America. Oh, I didn't see what he... Let's see, look at what he's running. 
he's been running for Michael Shank race in, in the Acura and GTD. So, and then uh, Brandon Gaughan returning for his last race of the season in the three, running the road courses this year. Uh, Dylan Murcott came back this time running for BJ McLeod. Of course, Johnny Jackson was running 13, ended up giving it up to Landon Castle. Catherine Legg coming back to run the 15 for a second straight race. Uh, she's ho- She said that she really wants to be in NASCAR full-time, so here's hoping that she can get the funding to run that Johnny Davis entry for next year. I, I just think she'd be real good for the sport. Just She's got such a diverse background between IndyCar, Champ Car, testing Formula One, and then running uh, sports car prototypes for so long. Uh, she's just a great driver. And it would be a great one for the sport. Ryan Priest obviously coming back to the 18 for this race. Uh, Gallagher back in the 23. Justin Marks back in the 42. It was probably his last uh, NASCAR weekend uh, races. Of Kind of announced that he's kind of done looking for funding to go pursue running stock cars. He's just he's done more than he thought he could do. And he's off to do probably sports car for a long time. That's just the way things are. Uh, back Ty Majeski in the 60. Kaz Grala came back in the Fury entry to run the 61. Uh, Ray Black Jr. actually in the 74 car. Harmon entry. It's kind of a quasi Harmon BJ McLeod. It was a BJ's car, but Harmon fielded it. So a little better uh, equipment than what that 74 normally is. Then Vinny Miller obviously moving to 78. Andy Lally coming back in the 90. Sponsorship from uh, Cesar Baccarale with Alpha Prime. And then Chase Briscoe in the 98. And how about Obiker Racing coming back, making their grand old debut uh, with the 97. Tanner Berryhill, who hasn't been in a seat since 2014, I think. Let's see what I got. 2015, he failed to qualify. Yeah, he failed to qualify at Daytona in the Xfinity Series, and then he failed to qualify in a cup car at Phoenix. So, yeah. Been a long day. He's been working, trying to come up a deal. He's been running the the cars, cars late model cars for a, for a while now, just doing a lot of short track stuff. So, anyways, uh, yeah, nice to see him back in the sport. And, of course, old Victor. Um, I've had my run-ins with him. But uh, coming back, uh, Victor's made some big gains. He's purchased the haul, the 83 hauler from BK and all the equipment and all that stuff. Came back. They had a well, well-prepared car. It was pretty quick in practice. And then qualifying, lost brakes, backed it into the turn one wall or turn one tire barriers, which I think that – Today, during the cup race, they, they called the Heartburn Corner or whatever, or Tums Heartburn cu- Corner. I don't know. It was it was goofy, but not – it was – looked like, oh, it was going to be pretty good for old Bica, and then it just kind of ended in uh, typical old Bica silliness. But anyways, uh, uh, the rest of the weekend, we had uh, testing on Thursday – I uh, had a couple tore up race cars. Uh, Brendan Gone tore up a car, and then uh, uh, Spencer Gallagher destroyed a car. Had to go to backup. Uh, Friday had a bunch of spins, bunch of damage, and all that. And then uh, probably the worst ones uh, for the Xfinity guys is that uh, JJ Yaley in the CRSS racing entry. Uh, was actually supposed to run the whole race. They had a sponsor, but uh, missed the corner in turn one. Missed barrier tire barriers. Actually got actually got in the safer barrier right there. Absolutely destroyed the front end of that race car. Unfortunately, uh, Johnny Jackson had spun further up the track, and he thought there may have been oil on the track, but no, it was just unrelated. But uh, unfortunately, hard hit, and they had to go to a backup. And unfortunately, it was their Dover car for next week, so. 
unfortunately, uh, he ended that ended up being a starting park injury. So, anyways, uh, hold on. The Xfinity race is actually pretty clean. Uh, start off with a caution, the thirty six car, uh, Alex LeBay Quat is a DGM and Mario Goslin entries qualified fantastically this weekend. Uh, LeBay qualified fifth. And then the night or ninety Alali, he he had some issues in qualifying, but he was a uh, pretty quick all weekend in qualifying twentieth. But LeBay coming through the front stretch chicane, uh, axle shaft left the the left side axle shaft actually slid out and departed from the car. Uh, they towed him in, slapped another shaft in, and he was out. Only lost one lap, and he would come back. To finish 13th. So, uh, huge disappointment at the start, but actually came back for a pretty decent little finish. And then it was pretty clean and green for the most part, most of the race. Uh, nothing really uh, of note. They finished the first stage, got through the second stage without any incidences. And then, of course, on the restart, big wreck at the start. About one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cars all tore up, unfortunately, and then uh, they got that cleaned up. And then it was pretty clean for a few laps. And then the 38, 39 car of Ryan Sieg, who had some damage from uh, some uh, contact, the whole front of the car pretty much exploded on that car, and they had to throw the caution. But then it uh, kind of went into uh, – the last 10 laps is just a dash for the finish. The old Chase Briscoe, uh, the Ford Performance Development Driver, probably the top prospect right now, got his first career Xfinity win, driving the 98, the second Haas, Stuart Haas Biagi Den Best entry. Uh, unfortunately, he's been in the 60 car a bunch this year and not been performing like as they had hoped. But... Uh, yeah, he got a win in Eldora, driving in a one-off for uh, Thor Sport, and a win in the first Roval race for Xfinity Series. So, good good win. He's a fantastic driver. Um, probably should have been in the, the final round in the playoffs last year, but they uh, blew an engine or blew an engine or something of that sort. And uh, but he did get a win at Miami at the end of the year. To cap off Brad Keselowski racing, but uh, basically uh, Fred Biaggi kind of said that hey he's gonna be running full time next year in something, so not not the ninety eight car but he'll be in something. So yeah, good for Chase. Uh, second place Justin Marks once again he's good road course ringer and he's in one of the best cars in the series. And then old Austin Cindric finishing third after starting on pole had probably the dominant car and then of course he kind of derped it up and uh, uh, locked up the rear brakes and spun but uh, came back finished third uh, much needed good points day for him and then uh, Ryan Priest in fourth good run for him Christopher Bell good run fifth Matt Tift who's actually turning into a decent little road racer I, I don't think that's his background but He's been pretty decent on, since he got in the Xfinity Series on these road course races. Uh, Cole Custer, 7th. Cosgrala with another great run in 8th. Uh, Tyler Reddick actually kept it out of trouble for once. 9th. Old Daniel Hemrick. Really fast car all weekend. and uh, Unfortunately, uh, got a uh, penalty in the the front, st- front stretch chicane. Had to make a stop and go. And fell down to 10th. Uh, we got highlights of Ryan Reed quietly in 11th, Ross Chastain in the J- JD Motorsports 4, 12th, Alex LeBay coming back from that first lap nightmare to finish 13th, uh, and, uh, Jeremy Clements with the 18th place finish, uh, Spencer Gallagher with a backup car in 20 or in 19th, uh, and then uh, Lawson Oskin back making his debut 21st. Uh, Let's see what else we got. Yeah, well, Josh Balicki in 24th. Much needed good run for him. Unfortunately, leapfrogged the 40. But, uh, hey, it's going to be a tight battle to the end. Uh, 
this was his wheelhouse. Chad's wheelhouse is next week, so we shall see. And how about old Ray Black Jr. on the lead lap for the Harmon McLeod entry, 26th. And that's pretty much it. We got uh, Catherine Leg and ended up five laps down. She ended up uh, got spun early in the race, ended up off track, went to get back on, and actually went up over the curbs, the the, the runoff curbs, and actually tore the right front of the splitter off the car. That was pretty disappointing. But anyways, pretty entertaining uh, old Xfinity race. We go back into the cup race. And, my God, this was probably the race of the year. <laughs> Screw Las Vegas. Screw Chicago. Freaking Roval. Um, it started off pretty clean. They mined their P's and Q's. And they tore up a lot of stuff in practice. A uh, th- bunch of guys got into the tire barriers on the exit of the backstretch chicane. Which I think they called Charlotte's Web or whatever. They, they had some stupid name for it. But a bunch of drivers were clipping it, and then finally, uh, Bubba Wallace uh, overcooked it, uh, had a bobble, and absolutely annihilated, got airborne. And then, about 10 minutes later, after they went back green, Eric Jones bobbled and hit it even crazier. <laughs> so they ended up having to move the, the whole tire barrier back just to give the drivers a little bit of uh, <laughs> room for error, because it was pretty bad. But anyways, uh, yeah, they had, um, it was pretty clean, and it just ramped up at the end. And it looked like we are going to have a uh, fantastic uh, fight to go, a fantastic uh, fuel strategy race towards the end. And then, of course, old Ricky Stenhouse overcooked it going into turn one, got into the tire barriers, and that led to a caution. And at first, it looked like uh, Brad Keselowski, who everyone's like, oh, I don't know, he's probably not going to make it to the end on fuel. And then here's Kyle Larson, he's on the edge too, but he's got four laps of fuel on Keselowski. So it looked like, oh, it was going to shape up to be a fantastic uh, fuel mileage road course race. And then that caution came out. And then that restart happened. And everyone missed the corner. As uh, Todd Gordon... Uh, Told uh, Joey Logano under the red flag, and Brad fled the troops off the cliff. <laughs> he just, he overcooked it, locked up the brakes, and everyone else sort of followed him in there and just heart took out several good cars. It was probably about 10 or 15 something cars that were tore up in that one. It just, uh, yeah, real unfortunate. Uh, we had that happen. Um, a lot of fast cars. Kazlowski and Larson, of course, one, two. Kyle Busch in third got taken out. Paul Menard, who'd been running the top five towards the second half of that race, uh, overcooked it after the, everything was said and done. Ended up in Brad's door. William Byron, Trevor Bain, Bubba Wallace with uh, damage. Eric Jones, I think, with a bunch of damage too. And it just, it was just messy. And then, uh, and then Larson with the comeback of probably the comeback of the year. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So then we went green. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. inherited the lead. Jimmy Johnson was second. Fighting for the end. Those last two relapse. They got to uh, they got to the back stretch or got to the front stretch chicane. Uh, Johnson looked, looked to the left. Uh, Truex went to throw it a block. Johnson overcooked it, locked up the rear bl- brakes, uh, spun across the chicane, and backed into Truex's door. Took him out too. And then Ryan Blaney wins. I think it was his only lap. Oh, no, he led 16 laps at the start of the race, but oh my goodness. <laughs> That's like some. Daytona 1979 levels finish right there. It's just wow. Um, two two champions uh, take, taking himself out, and then probably one of the hot 
top prospects right now in the sport taking the win. Um, it was just a fantastic. Uh, wow. Um, and then of course Drix showing his displeasure, uh, ass packed it. Uh, Johnson on the cooldown lap, but uh, and he yeah he, every right to be upset. He he had the win in hand, and then Johnson kind of derped and spun. And it wasn't intentional. He It was just a mistake. He just overcooked it, going for the win. The guy hasn't won in 51 races. You got to imagine um, someone who's won as many championships as he has going for that win. It just... Yeah. Just... <laughs> had an opportunity. It's been a real disappointing season. And uh, just had to go for it. And unfortunately, that happened. That's racing. But uh, anyways, and yeah, I just don't feel... It's like all the people going on and on about how Johnson, was, that was dirty and pool of blood. It's like, you want to see dirty. You should have been watching the Martinsville race last night. The... Uh, Valley Star 300 because uh, watch a watch a uh, a uh, a late model event a, a major late model event that's dirty with stuff that goes on in those races what Johnson did is just a racing incident running hard for the win locked him up like and he was trying he knew he was in trouble he tried going getting out of spinning it to avoid getting into Truex and he's still going into Truex so all this is going down or this has already happened and they uh so in the back of the pack Daniel Hemrick uh wrecked uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt tried to make it a pass on Daniel Hemrick and got dumped or got dumped Hemrick didn't let off and sent Jeffrey into the wall so Jeffrey Gets it off the wall. The car stalls. Won't move. So, Kyle Larson, who absolutely annihilated his car in that restart crash. Right front, he's got like, this This is stupid, silly, hella flush levels of camber in the right front. He can't turn left at all. And, uh, so basically, the, the car is undrivable. And everyone said, he's not going to make, he's not going to finish the race. He's probably just going to go out and make a lap or two before they tell him. It's, uh... And a lot of people call it conspiracy because, well, what was his minimum speed? What was his minimum speed? It's like, you guys... The first lap after... That first lap after a restart... Doesn't factor in because you're getting up to speed. The second lap, that's when they start counting towards making minimum speed. And I think they'll give you about five... If you're dangerously slow, they'll call you in right away. But uh, usually, they'll give you a couple chances to pick it up before you got to come in, come back in. Well, it's a green-white checkers finish. You're not going to have that time frame. So, yeah. He went out, and he had to finish to make the next round of the chase. And I guess I'm calling it a chase because I'm stuck in 2005 because I'm a kid of that time period. But anyways... Yeah, that that the two, we the green and white checkers is too quick to call for minimum speed. It just it, it's just you got to think about it from a someone who's calling the race. And yeah, he probably wouldn't have made minimum speed if it was like a five lap dash instead of a two lap dash. But that's just the way it is. But anyways, uh, they had uh, so they got the replay. He's way back. You just see. So there's Jeffrey sitting there stopped, and then I get a fart. I don't know if that. I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but ooh. but anyways, Jeffrey sitting there stopped. You just see in the background coming out NASCAR turn four. Kyle just denies the wall, just doesn't turn, hits the wall, and apparently they told him, "Hey, hey, ninety six to stop, ninety six to stop. You got got to finish, got to finish, you got to finish." He comes through the chicane. <laughs> Goes to make that left hander and doesn't turn and hits the wall again and just grabs a gear, 
goes, finishes, gains one spot, puts him in a three-way tie with Jimmy Johnson, uh, Eric Almarola, and himself. And guess what? <laughs> him and Almarola got the tiebreaker over Johnson. Oh my God! It's just the the finish was just the finish that kept on giving. It just I, I'm lost for words. That was like the most. I had there has been we've had some good good finishes this year, and we've had a lot of duds this year, but yeah, Chicagoland was excited, Las Vegas was excited. This was like next level classic race stuff. It's just the craziness that transpired. Oh my god! And then I just feel good seeing uh uh Blaney come out with the win, finally getting that second career win. Um, for his first for Penske, it just all three Penske car and all three Penske cars are coming into their, their own this year. So, or this time of the year. So, good to see all three running good. All three have wins for the year. Oh, man. It's just, whoo. <laughs> that was a finish. Um, We will be talking about this one and this event for quite some time. Um, I will say the track looked fantastic. There, there's a lot, I had some doubts about it. But it wasn't as tight as uh, it made out to be. There was no room for error. Uh, as we found out on that restart, or those two restarts, there was a wreck. There's got to be some pot in turns, the turn 1-2 complex. There was got to be some Constantina stuff going on, taking out some cars. But... The track looked fantastic. It just, they did top notch job on. I'm not normally a, uh, a, uh, praiser of Speedway Motorsports and the Smiths and all that and how they run things, but they took a gamble. It paid off. Probably race of the year. It's just, oh my God. And now everyone's talking about they want to roll everything. I was, I was even saying that on Facebook, but it's just, there are some events, I think, uh, a lot more feasible than others. Uh, Pocono. I'd like to see them do something with that. Uh, there's a lot. The track that track is definitely needs a lot of work because there's it would need a lot of work. But then again, Charlotte Motor Speedway's road course needed a lot of, a lot of work. So there's that. It just it was a two way street. So it's just a fact fact of the matter if uh Pocono can get the funding to do do such a project and then of course Indianapolis I'd, I'd much rather see the road course at because the road course at Indianapolis it's wide it's like a full-blown road course there's runoff there there's all sorts of stuff because it's a big track it's a two and a half mile track and Indy cars race there fine f1s race there fine now whether or not those events are exciting or not that's up to for debate but and of course f1 obviously a <laughs> tire gate but uh anyways that's all up for debate but i think the way the nascar drivers are aggressive and the stage slash playoff systems work into the driver's aggression recently i think a road the indy road course would be a much better event than running the aero package there next year which they're going to do that's just me but what do i know but anyways but then again that'd be a logistical nightmare because indy indianapolis is a logistical nightmare for nascar teams anyways so, and just the fact that Holler Parking is right there, and oh, I'm trying to think. We accessed the infield from that road course section, so I don't know what they would have to do. And it's, there's some question marks to going on, but it's just, it's just me. But that that's some que- that's a question for when they do it. 
And that's a nightmare for me when we get to that point. So anyways, Ryan Blaney won. Jamie McMurray came out second. Yes. Uh, the McMurray that's unperformed all year or for quite a while and uh, is out of a seat for next year. Uh, or, of course, I guess Chip did offer him a in-house uh, kind of a mentor position, kind of what Dario does, Dario Franchitti does on the open wheel racers. So, and then it, I think there was even a Daytona 500 ride in the card for it too. So I thought that would be pretty cool if that happens. But Jamie's had a, he's had, he's probably one of them, the biggest, I didn't want to say bust, but disappointments. Because he, he didn't really, he kind of came out of nowhere. He, uh, of course, ran for the Mittlers and Truck Series part time, and then uh, got the opportunity to run for Bruco, replacing Casey Atwood. Had Williams Travel Centers on the car, did pretty good, and then uh, two years. I think it was two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah, two thousand one, two thousand two. Well, then Sterling. Of course, the story. Sterling Marlin got hurt at Kansas, so they needed a uh, leaf driver. Well. Jamie got the call, and then uh, two races later at Charlotte, actually this event, back when it was old days, won, won the race. It completely took the world by storm. It's like, holy crap, who is this kid? And of course, the 40 car, 2001-2002, was on top of its game. Uh, Ganassi breathed new life into the old Sabco team, just turned them into championship contenders. Sterling probably should have won the championship that year if he hadn't gotten hurt because he had two weeks in a row. He had real hard crashes. People forget the week before Kansas, he had a real hard crash at Richmond, so he was a little banged up too. But that was just the way things played out. So, of course, he got the seat at... They added the third car full-time. Got Texco Haviland to come over from uh, Robert Yates Racing. Ran for Rookie of the Year. One Rookie of the Year. Had pretty good. I think he finished like 13th in points. Pretty solid year. Good year for a rookie. And then uh, 2004 was quick, but couldn't quite get that uh, consistency or that winning. Uh, just couldn't quite get there. <laughs> and then uh, missed, missed out on the chase. Was the first one in was 11th in points at the end of the year. And then 2005, same deal. Just kind of missed out again and had a pretty good time. Or, of course, and I don't know why I'm going through the J. McMurray history, but it's just, it's fun to do. I like talking about this stuff. So then he got the, signed on to replace Kurt Busch at Rush Fenway Racing. Uh, 26 car, had a Irwin Industrial Tools and Crown Royal Whiskey. Uh, of course, he had to get out of that contract a year early, and uh, yeah, there was there, there was a lot of <laughs> craziness that went down because Kurt Busch was tabbed to sign on with uh, Penske to replace Rusty Wallace, who was retiring, but he had to get out of a extra year on that contract, and I think, but then Kurt kind of got fired two races early because of drunk driving, blah blah blah. But like basically, Jamie went on the the. This looked like hey. Jamie, he's got it. He's moving to Roush. They are on top of their game. They've won two straight championships in 2004, 2000, or 2003, 2004. He's got to win a bunch of races. And he did not struggle. Oh, my God. That was a off, off year. 25th in points. I think at Chicago, and I remember he finished right because it, it ran green most of the race. And, like, he finished, like, 36th, 37th. There wasn't any attrition. That's where he finished. Holy crap. That was just miserable, miserable year. Uh, the next year, 2007, got a little better. Uh, won his second career race um, and a photo finish at the July Daytona race. Uh, got top 20 points, but still kind of disappointed. 2008, much of the same. 2009, uh, they struggled again. Just absolutely about where they were in 2006. But got a win at Talladega at the end of the year and a photo finish. 
And then went back to, I just say back, but went to the ne- now merged uh, Earnhardt Ganassi Racing. A DEI had merged with Chip Ganassi Racing. So he essentially went home. They were it pretty much they took the DEI equipment to Concord to run out a Ganassi shop and the Ganassi's engineer and all that. Basically, how that deal worked. Well, came out of the bat, won the Daytona 500, won the Brickyard, missed out on the chase, but won Charlotte three races that year. Fantastic. And then ever since then, it's just kind of been mediocr- mediocrity. It just it. Wins every once in a while, but just nothing really. Yeah, he it took him to 2013 to get another win at Talladega. Uh, made the chase last year, playoffs for the first time last year. Or no, it was it's, it's just been real disappointed uh, to see him just kind of wasting away in that role. Last year was, he was really consistent, 17 top tens out of 36 races, but uh, this year's just really underperformed. And even Larson struggled, but he's still running circles around McMurray. And, of course, finally getting the axe at the end of the year. So, big question mark, who's going to be in that car? Uh, a lot of rumors. I think the top rumor right now is Kurt Busch might end up in that role. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, there was rumor like a Daniel Hemrick or a uh, Ross. The other one's Ross Chastain. Uh, either Kurt or Ross Chastain. It'll probably be Kurt. I think Ross will be in in the 42 Xfinity card full-time next year. That's just me. See where those cards play. But uh, anyways, uh, looking at... uh, Wow, I got really off topic there. But uh, any, Ryan Blaney won, Jay McMurray second. Clint Boer came back from really ill-handling car. uh, About got lapped and came back to those uh, series of restarts to finish third. It's just, what? <laughs> it's just the crazy... And then, like, Alex Bowman struggled all race. Uh, Biz Strategy got him out front. He stayed there and finished fourth, avoided the carnage. Kurt Busch kind of faded mid after the start of the race, but came back, finished fifth. Chase Elliott finished sixth. AJ Allmendinger had a quick car, but he was just way over-aggressive. It's just kind of been... Ever since he got that win at Watkins Glen, that's just been... AJ at these road courses, just really overdriving the cars. And he made a lot of moves. That kind of, everyone's kind of went, huh? But anyways, he finished seventh. Uh, probably will be his last top ten in, of his career. Because I don't really think see him going anywhere next year that anyone would take him. He'll probably go sports car racing again. Johnson ended up finishing eighth. Harvick uh, kind of struggled, finished ninth. Joey Logano finished 10th. He was the old Penske car that really kind of struggled. Didn't really have anything for the other two. And then Newman came back from a late race spin, finished 11th. Uh, Matt Beninetto, how, uh, Denny Hamlin <laughs> killed like two race cars. Came back to finish 12th. And, like he was off this weekend. Like he still ended up missing the, the next round. But I was like, man, this is like the worst place to have Denny Hamlin on the bubble to make the chase, and especially the, the uh, bad luck the first two races in the chase. But anyways, uh, and then Matt Benedetto finished in 13th. Fantastic. Uh, always nice to see the Go Fast team get a good run. Uh, still don't really know where he's going to go next year. I really hope he's full-time in the Cup Series. He's he's a real good driver. He's a real good guy. I just I really want to see him do good. I just really hope he's not sitting on his butt next year. And then uh, Mark Truex Jr. of course finished fourteenth after that spin. Regan Smith filling in for Casey Kane finishing fifteenth. So been really solid in that ninety five car. Casey comes back at Dover. David Reagan finishing sixteenth. Chris Buescher coming back from a crash finished seventeenth. Michael Madal finished. 18th, uh, Eric Almirola, uh, they had a fan, because t- he was the bubble driver, uh, they had the side-by-side shots between the ra- race for the lead and uh, Almirola coming from the field, R- drove his way into uh, 19th and got himself into the next round, so it's just a fantastic drive just to see the sheer tenacity, this guy r- racing for... Really racing for 
to keep his championship hopes alive. So it's just real fantastic to see that. And Cole Witt coming back. Uh, hasn't run since uh, um, Watkins Glen. Finishing 20th in the TriStar entry. And the rest is just people just real tore up. Ross Chastain in the second Jay Robinson car finishing 24th. That's pretty good in the top 25. And then Jeffrey uh, probably could have finished a lot better. Oh, Daniel Hemrick. Had a real fast car much of the day, but he got caught up in that restart wreck. Has Had some damage. Had to come back. Finished 23rd. Probably should have been in the top 15 because... He was real quick all weekend. I was just to see the part time car just come out of nowhere and run like it did. It was just real fun to see. Yeah, that and not really much for uh, Justin Marks in the fifteen. He, he had a flat tire at one point. Uh, finished twenty seventh, a couple one lap down. And the only other uh, ringer was Stan Barrett coming back for his first. Hey, that guy has not made a. Uh, Cup attempt since 2008. Has not made a cup race since 2006. And ended up finishing shotgun on the field. Had a brake failure going into turn one. Early in the race. He had a failure at the start, start of the race. Tire failure. That sent him back out there. And then the brakes failed. Barreled into the turn one barriers. And he finished shotgun on the field. So anyways. That was the Roval. Uh, this more... Uh, Let's go through uh, what else we had run. Uh, the Pinty Series ran last night, finished their their championship event, uh, running at the fantastic J- Jacusa Motor Speedway, the fantastic rebuilt 5.8s, the old Karwatha track. Uh, DJ Kennington starting on pole, having the fastest car, and getting his first win in the Pinty Series since 2013. I hadn't... I didn't know he's been on that much of a uh, dry sprout, dry spout. So good to see old DJ getting himself a good win. I wor- we've worked with him a few times over at MBM, and uh, he's just a real good guy. Uh, Donald Theodore running for uh, Scott Steckley finished second. Uh, Kevin Lacroix finished third. Pete Shepard the third finished fourth. Andrew Ranger finishing fifth. Uh, Cole Powell six. Mark Antoine. Cameron finishing seventh, Adam Martin eighth, Anthony Simone finishing ninth, and old LP Dumoulin finishing tenth. And old LP got himself the championship. Seven points over Alex, Alex Tagliani. I believe this is pro. Yeah, this is LP's second championship. He won back in 2014. Um, yeah. Good to. Got a buddy that works over at that division, uh, works on his car, and it's just a fantastic. Th- those uh, Dodd, a lot of those cars are fantastic looking. Um, that old WeatherTech car. But anyways, uh, that was last night. This morning, or also last night, the k n West Series ran their annual event up in Idaho at the Tough Quarter Mile Meridian Speedway, and history was made last night. Haley Deegan, Brian Deegan's daughter, won. She won. Um, yeah, this is huge. Uh, yeah, all people are going, oh, there's only 15 cars there. Blah, blah, blah. But there are nine, nine of those cars are quick. Um, the other ones, yeah, yeah you had your... Uh, John Wood car, your uh, Patriot cars, 36, 32, 08. And then uh, Andrew Cohen's running for Joe Nava and Takuma Koga doing his thing. But, oh, my God. Those other nine cars are good. You got Cody Vanderwall, probably. That guy's doing a lot with nothing. Um Family family team, yeah, technically uh, Patriot Motorsports entry, but uh, does a lot with nothing. Uh, they won a race this year, or they dominated Tucson this year at the doubleheader. Uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Jefferson, uh, co-owner of Jefferson Pits, 
fantastic uh, veteran driver coming back. Uh, Matt Levine running for his own team. Uh, how about uh, the Brancati triple thread of Derek Thorne, Ryan Partridge, and Trevor Huddleston? And then you got the triple thread of the McAnally cars of Derek Cross, Cole Roos, and Haley. <laughs> it's just a fantastic, just fantastic. Uh, like, the fast cars are good. That, there's no doubt about it. And uh, she had to. She had to beat her teammates to win it. She uh, moved, had to move Cold House. Um, there was a car spun on the last lap. I think Cole went high to kind of give room, and she kind of poked her nose in there. Got it. I don't think he was expecting her to go. She did and got that win. Um, she is going to go far. She is just, hmm. Uh, hit a. I think uh, she's got the connections. Her dad's got the connections. Um, she, what does she turn eighteen? She's only seventeen too. <laughs> That's the July eighteenth. So yeah, she's she can't run full time in trucks until the middle of next year. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she ran Martinsville or Phoenix for KB or. Martinsville or Phoenix for somebody by the KBM or Gilliland or somebody like that. Um, she's proved her whole worth. It was a historic win. First woman driver to win uh, a K&N event or back, dating back to the Winston West days and the Bush East days. Uh, first woman to win a touring event since Shauna Robinson won a, a, a goodies da- that goodies dash race in the 80s. That just oh, this is big, guys. It, it, I know a lot of people like to. Here's the thing: a lot of people, anytime a female driver gets into sport now, they lash onto her because we're desperate for diversity. That's all fine and dandy, but there's a lot of these drivers. You got like your Natalie Deckers is like, yeah, she looks good and she runs halfway decent, but. She's struggling to get top fives and tens in a Venturini ride. It's like that car should be competing for wins. This is the season Joe Graf won an ARCA race. Something's wrong here. And then, uh, and either that or you got a situation like the Cope twins where they're obviously marketing, marketed through their sexuality. It's just. That's just where women in racing has been. It's, just, it's been a, and then the whole Danica mania. It's just a, been a whole, uh, it's been a gimmick. And I'm really hoping that Haley is the driver that breaks the gimmick. She, she doesn't go out and does reveal in photo shoots. Well, of course, she's 17, but she doesn't play herself off being the cute girl and blah, 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 blah. She's there to race. She's there. She doesn't want a circus. She's there for a race. Yeah, she's got her got a famous dad, but she's there to... Uh, she wants to win races, and she's won a race. And she's going to go far in this sport. I think she's truly one of the ne- next big things. Um, I had some doubts about her just because of her dad and all that. At the start of the year, it's like, hey, she's another girl running the K&N series. See what she does. But she's really turned heads this year. Uh, the dirt race at Las Vegas, as big of a shit show that was, she turned... She, she made me a believer in that that race because, like, first of all, the whole start of that thing was a disaster. But anyways, dirt's a different animal, and she qualified on pole, and she had a car that probably could have won, and unfortunately didn't. Um, she got beat by one of the, the top prospects, probably the guy who's got to win the ARCA championship this year, uh, Sheldon Creed. But anyways... 
this is this is great for the sport. Um, and that 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 season finishes up pretty quick too. I know they got two more races. Uh, they they run uh, All American Speedway uh, on the fifth on the thirteenth, and then uh, Kern County at the end of the month. So two more races. Just a fantastic day. Uh, Derek Thorne still holds a 32-point lead over Ryan Partridge and now Cole Krause. Uh, Derek Krause is fourth. And then uh, Haley's leading Rookie of the Year points right now with an eight-point lead over Bricotti driver Trevor Huddleston. But, yeah. That was a, that was a good weekend. And then F1 raced at uh, Russia. It was a uh, Mercedes Smackdown once again. Uh yeah, that was about it. And then uh, the two Toro Rosso's both had brake failures and spun on the same lap. Sebastian Vettel now has a 50-point lead, or Lewis Hamilton now has a 50-point lead over Sebastian Vettel going into Japan. And, yeah, it slip slide. Once again, that championship slip sliding away. So, do, do, do. and also today, uh, with the mod- uh, modifies racing at the fall final. Their last race of the year, Kyle Bozignor won. Bring up the... It's not on Racing Reference yet. Go away. I'm trying to get my laptop to work with one hand. I'm going to try talking to the mic see bass. Waylon Modified Door. Kyle Bozignor won his first career race. And then Justin, of course, wins the championship. He's absolutely dominated this year. So, I have ranted on for way too long. Oh, it's about an hour. So, I've done a... uh, uh, Next week, Dover International Speedway. Dover Downs, the Monster Mile, the Concrete Jungle. uh, High Banked, One Mile Oval. Where do we got? We got Cannon East. With their last race of the year, the Crosley Brands 125. Apparently, Tyler Dipple has already left Gillen Racing after joining early in the season. Apparently, had a fallen out. Got into the teammate Tyler Ankrum. Ankrum locked up the championship over Dipple. And apparently, Dipple's already quit slash got fired. Apparently, he got into Ankrum at the end of the race. Or at, during the cooldown lap. But uh, anyways, uh, Ankrum wins over Dipple. Ronnie, and then going into that, Ronnie Bassett's third, Anthony Alfredo's fourth, Ruben Garcia's fifth, Ryan Varkas s- sixth, Chase Cabre seventh, Dylan Bassett eighth, Spencer Davis ninth, and Colin Garrett is in tenth and right. That's going in the last race of the year, Dover. Saturday, the uh, Xfinity Series, the Bar Harbor 200, and being a main guy, it just makes me giggle seeing that there's a main company bar harbor bar harbor going out to the haba uh sponsoring uh in nascar of course through the true uh apparently uh ryan ryan and martin's dad uh has a partnership with that company so that's why they're in the sport so still i think it's cool to see uh daniel hemrick has a pretty substantial lead right now because uh, Justin Allgaier's struggles. But uh, anyways, uh, Christopher Bell has got a 33-point lead over Daniel Hamrick. Tyler Reddick is third in points, surprisingly. Uh, Cole Custer is fourth. Matt Tiff, fifth. Elliot Sadler, sixth. Justin Allgaier, seventh. Ross Chastain, eighth. Austin Sindrick, ninth. Ryan Truex, 10th. Ryan Reed, 11th. And Brandon Jones, 12th. Uh, right now, the cutoff. Uh, Austin Sindrick sits uh, a tight 15 point lead. Or not really a tight, but kind of a. He's got to be careful. A 15 point lead over Ryan Truex. And Truex is really good at Dover. And so there's a good chance you'll see Truex do something good. And then even Brandon Jones, he's a win in the win to get in. But I think 
he's definitely got a good shot of just pulling one out of his butt. Especially over Ryan Reed, because Ryan Reed is just Ryan Reed. And then Sunday... I think it's the... Oh, the Gander Outdoors 400. They just announced it, like, today. The sponsorship for that race. Is, it always seems to be every year at Dover. They they can't find sponsorship until, like, right, right before. But anyways, looking at the Chase standings, this was an elimination race. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, Alex Bowman, Ryan... New or Eric Jones, Jimmy Johnson, Alex Bowman all eliminated today. Uh... Jones and Bowman, yeah, this is their first time in the chase. Johnson's a bit, kind of a big surprise, but this has been a real disappointing season for the seven-time champ. So. Anyways, uh, Kyle Busch sits on a 34-point lead over Martin Truex Jr. or over Kevin Harvick. Martin Truex Jr. way back at third, 137 points out. Uh, Kurt Busch fourth, Joey Logano fifth, Brad Keselowski sixth, Clint Boyer seventh, Kyle Larson eighth, Ryan, Ryan Blaney ninth but I think this is just the updated chase I don't think it's the updated chase I don't know it's weird oh I, it's hard to follow sometimes Chase Elliott Denny Hamlin Eric Almarola running out the whole dealio yeah I think it is updated because it's uh Larson one bonus bonus no, I'm looking at the wrong one. That that is the non-playoff standings. Ooh. But yeah, there's non-playoff standings for that's right. But anyways, Martin Truex Jr. is the top seed over or missing the mark was Jimmy Johnson, Austin Dillon, Danny Hamlin, Eric Jones. Top sixteen. Ryan Newman would actually be 16, 16th in points right now if there wasn't any change. He'd be ahead of his teammate. But, uh, of course, Dylan got in a crash today. Hamlin struggled. Jones hit everything but the pace car. And Johnson went for the win, lost the championship. How's your 12 sit right now in Cup? Mark Truex Jr. with a 30-point lead over Kevin Harvick. Kyle Busch with that wreck. This, uh, With that wreck. Sits thirty seventh, Kurt or sits in third. Kurt Busch in fourth, Brad Keselowski fifth, Joey Logano sixth, Ryan Blaney seventh, and then Chase Elliott, Clint Boyer, Alex Bowman, Kyle Larson, Eric Almarola. That is your twelve. Your round of twelve. Going into Dover. Trucks of course off for two weeks before they go to Talladega. The Pinty series just finished up la last night. LP Dumoulin is your champion, as I mentioned before. Uh, KN West is off for two weeks. And once again, All American Speedway, another flat quarter mile. Uh, but Derek Thorns pretty much almost has the championship locked down. I think he can lock it down. He'd have to not show up to not lock it down. I think he just has to show up to lock it down. That's just how much of a lead he's got. Modifies, of course, finish today. Justin Bosignor locked up that championship. Oh, the New Mexico Series is running today in Autodromo de Chiapas. Urban Garcia has a 26-point lead over Erwin Vences. Third, Olivier Hugo Oliveres, Ruben Ravello fourth, Santiago Tovar fifth. And then still at three weeks' time is when the final ra race weekend of the year at Circuit Zolder for the Whalen Euro Series. Next week we see the makeup race for ARCA at the Lucas Oil Raceway. Doing a two weeks to end the race of uh, the season. Uh, a short track race and then a intermediate race. So pretty good end of the season for the Arcas guys. Indy cars done. F one up next is Japan. Let's see how when the next one's gonna be. Do -do -do. That is this weekend. Yep, 
and then they have a one week break in Austin, Mexico City, then a week break, then Brazil, week break, then Abu Dhabi. So their F one's really picked up on their schedule the end of the year. Formal E, of course the next they are done. They start in December. A week or thirteen day or ten days before uh Christmas. It hit over in uh Saudi Arabia, of all places. I've talked about that earlier. And, of course, next week, the Bathurst 1000. Fantastic event. One of the biggest races of the year in any country. Uh, someone just downshifted. Uh, some engine made a horrible sound outside. Of someone's engine. But uh, Shane Van Gisbergen with a pretty substantial lead over Scott McLaughlin. Jamie Wincup third, Craig Lowndes fourth. He's retiring at the end of the year. And Triple Eight announced they're actually not running three cars next year. So kind of disappointed. But I'm sure the rest of the field's going yes. David Reynolds in fifth. Fabian Coulthard sixth. Rick Kelly, the, the top Nissan, in seventh. Chaz Mostert eighth. Scott Pye ninth. Tim Slade tenth. Then AC, Amer- ACTs off in two weeks, and then of course. Cars is off until November. They all here's a crazy one. They announced they had to do an expedition or exhibition road course race at Dominion next year. So it's like, man, that, that's kind of neat. I'm sure they'll probably get ten cars. And of course, two weeks is the Petit Le Mans running out the year for Emza. So that's pretty much all I got. Um. Hopefully in the next week, the next Wookiee Drives will be out. Um, I'm hopefully get the there's another fart. There hopefully get the motivation uh, when I get done this to record the audio for that, um, and then it's just editing it all together. Um, then maybe a little bonus video if I got time for from the Pathfinder. Just a little. I got a couple unboxings to do. And one of them I already filmed, so it's just a matter of time of me finding the time to edit it together. But worst comes to worst, that one will probably come after the Pathfinder. I don't know. I'll see. We shall see. I've been chatting on this for way too long. Now we're in 12 minutes. Time to get off. So anyways, it's been a good week. Hopefully you had a good week, and hopefully you have a good week coming up. So anyways, thank you for listening. This has been the Wookiee Automotive Racing Ramblin' Podcast. Find me on iTunes, Shout Engine, and YouTube. Just look up Wookiee Automotive and then the podcast name. But anyways, have a good one. Thank you for listening. The Nissan I want is the, uh, oh, it was in those commercials. They drove it to South America, the, uh, the Pathfinder. Pathfinder. We'd load up the Pathfinder and, whoops, we a four-door. And go skiing every weekend. Or the Paris Dakar Rally. We could be the first family to race from Paris to Africa. Quit our jobs, pull the kids out of school. Eh, maybe not.